It's the 30th of January 2021 and this is the future of photography. I'm Chris and with me the entire crew, Jeremiah, Adrian and of course Imar is back. Yay! Yay. How, Hi. Good to be uh, here. How's everyone? <clears throat> good, good. COVID fine. <laughs> We're not going to get rid of this for quite a while, I guess. Um, <laughs> Sadly, no. <laughs> let me let me fix Imar's Imar's name because she's not on the screen. This, this, this. Oh well, while you're doing that, we can have a competition yeah. of who's built the tallest snowman this week. Because actually, since we last <clears throat> spoke, we had some snow. In fact, it was the following day. Oh, I woke wow. up and uh, there was four inches of snow outside, about eight to ten centimeters, the fluffiest snow I've seen in many years around here. So that was fun. The world is upside down because yeah. normally we have the snow and you don't. <laughs> yeah. Oh, don't worry. The rain has taken it all away. Snow, since. but not much. Yeah. I'm just going to say. We didn't get as much as you. That it snowed. Those of you who know Los Angeles, or when I say the valley, which is you know as we start to move a little bit north and to the desert, it snowed, wow. and it snowed in Malibu. Impossible. Oh my yeah, God. years ago, Johnny Carson, uh, for those of you who remember when it did snow last time, he said, Malibu snow, yeah, flakes on flakes. <laughs> <laughs> Is that a cultural slur there, Jeremiah? <laughs> <laughs> I speak for myself, too. Right? So, <sighs> so um, we want to talk about print today. What's Is that it? Yeah, well, what's that exactly? <laughs> what is that? What what is what is print? What what why how? Um, and uh, Jeremiah, you suggested that one, so I did. I thought I thought it would be interesting to discuss photo magazines, uh, where they came from, where they have been, uh, where they are now, and where they're going if they're going, um, from the kind of point of view of commercial photography magazines uh, to zines themselves individual zines that that people make and and distribute uh and the difference uh in terms of experience experiencing uh photography uh as something you hold and turn pages it, it is a different experience than a projected screen um and also uh magazines that feature photography that may not be called photo magazines but are nonetheless arresting in terms of their visuals, uh, you know, the, the traditional one would be National Geographic. You know, mm -hmm. we don't we don't consider it a photo magazine, but so much amazing photography has emerged out of it. So I thought it would be interesting to open up our our discussion to um, our experiences with magazines, both as uh, uh, inspiration as we kind of evolved. Um, our own styles or instincts in photography uh, and what magazines we tend to look at now for that kind of inspiration. If, uh, if any just, at just, all. If, if any, any at all. Well, I was going to ask actually, we should probably do a, a, a round table question of if who of the four of us actually subscribes mm -hmm. to any kind of print magazine at this point. I, I can go. I can go first. Um, yeah. There are two I think that I know of in our household, but they are both for the children. One is uh, one is Nat Geo Kids, <laughs> and the other is called uh, This Week for Kids, which is a, a junior version of the the, the print magazine or a newspaper. This This Week or The Week. I forget whether it's called This Week or The Week. It's probably called The Week. But so so. Uh, but uh, we don't subscribe to anything i think the adults in this house don't subscribe to anything right now i, I subscribe to um aperture okay. uh which is a quarterly uh i subscribe to art in america an art forum um and and i found that experiencing their editorial content uh of, online which I did for many years is significantly different than getting their uh, magazine and sitting down and actually going through it and turning the page and reading and experiencing it. Uh, I just uh, get a lot more out of it. Also, uh, on the aperture end, it, it's it's like collecting books. I mean, it's I I do love a good photo book, but 
the magazines, even though they may be um, monthly, quarterly, whatever, by yearly, the quality of the printing uh, is really good and i keep them as books so that is another um, interesting question isn't it yeah do you keep them or not i think that's yeah some that, i do and some i don't yeah, yeah. Mm. Mm. i don't currently have any subscriptions to anything but like really it made me think back to the days when you actually visited a magazine shop and like browsed the shelves chose something that you wanted to read um i haven't done that for years <laughs> Everything seems to be, all consumption seems to be online for me nowadays, even newspapers. It immediately made me think that in my world, magazines have gone the way of newspapers in that, mm -hmm. like, um, actually anything like that signifies to me that I have time on my hands. If I can go to a shop, pick up a magazine, I'm generally either at an airport or a train station and I'm looking for something to uh, entertain me or educate me while I uh, leisurely take my route to wherever it is I'm going. And that doesn't happen very often. Um, so, yeah, everything is online and kind of, I, I feel like everything has gone a little bit more bite-sized rather than, um, you know, that kind of long form that you would sit down and, you know, enjoy reading. Everything is just snippet, snippet, snippet yeah. now, isn't it? I'm totally it? with you on the travel front. Um, you know, in the mm. golden days when we were allowed out of the house and I used to commute up to London, I, I commuted through what is certainly the busiest railway station in the UK, probably the busiest in Europe. Um, uh, which And there were at least two decent shops in there with rack upon rack of magazines, all sorts of stuff. And, mm. you know, you get to the, the railway station a few minutes early to go home in the evening. It was nice to go and browse through the magazines and maybe buy one occasionally. I noticed that the magazine rack uh, or stand, very, very long half block one, uh, the last one I visited was now selling exclusively COVID-based oh. gear, cleaning supplies, <laughs> masks. Well, if, I mean, uh, in, in, in terms of photo magazines, I'm, huh, I'm, I'm also not subscribed to anything at this point. Um, but whenever I get my hands on photo magazines, and I, and I do because every now and then I'm, I'm lucky enough to be able to write an article for one. So um, that usually gives, gives me a copy of that. And... Um, I just realized recently that they are still putting DVDs on the cover. So, no, <laughs> really? Those are, but this, this, is, this is a German photo magazine, um, only Germans will know it, CT, which um, is targeted towards, well, more the, let's say, the amateur side of photography, more gear focused, more selling focused. Mm -hmm. And they still have a DVD on the, on the front of the magazine which kind of reflects the age group that buys it i guess so um, <laughs> that's funny mm -hmm. i'm using my dvd as a uh <laughs> what do you call it a, a toaster yeah, you, yeah. Know, you want to get you want to get a sharpie and write aol on it <laughs> yes <laughs> so so the, the magazines um i do have a a, a history of reading photo magazines and getting photo magazines and buying them sporadically in some subscriptions over over time but right now mm, not really anymore if, do you uh all of you uh, were you in your developmental uh period as as uh photographers when you were younger when magazines um were plentiful did you find that just buying a magazine and reading it cover to cover, including the <laughs> ads, or especially the ads, <laughs> yeah. were somewhat inspiring in terms of uh, manifesting a desire to continue uh, developing your technical or aesthetic. That's um, a good question. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I Ma do, uh, mainly on the real technical. memories of cover to cover reading. Uh -huh. Yeah, yeah. Ma mainly, mainly on the when, when I I think like a lot of photographers when you start off um, you're more gear focused anyway. So from that point of view, and I'm a bit of a tech head anyway. So the, the, the that that interested me a lot, and through that the whole art side of photography kind of snuck in because of course they put articles about that in as well, and it was it was more of like a careful spoon fed um, thing 
in that respect. <laughs> but um, I have yeah. these I, I have these experiences of like going cover to cover. Yes, definitely. Mm. Certainly, yeah, certainly I do. Uh, you know, uh, in, as as a, I mean, I came quite late to photography. So did I do the? Oh, I probably did when I was when I was very fresh to photography about you know ten, twelve years, twelve years ago, maybe something like that. Um, less so, less so today. But yeah, just that thing that takes you right back to being a kid in the eighties, right? And and you'd get your computer magazines, and and in the back there would be printed lines and lines of code that you could type in and save to cassette, and you'd have a little game. <laughs> uh, oh my, yeah, we are really yeah, showing yeah. our age here. <laughs> <laughs> me and my me and my brother used to take turns in re yeah reading or versus reading versus typing and then you'd get there and you'd save it all onto the cassette and it still wouldn't work and then you'd have to go through and debug it because you'd misread something somewhere. Okay. Did I do that with photography? Do you know what actually? Um, not not so much. Um, uh, but there's it it it's interesting, isn't it? Because the the magazines that you see these days trade very much on equipment reviews. And and that's something that actually I don't like um, in a magazine. I'd rather be getting inspiration from from a magazine. So, so me these days, if I, if I if I buy one, and um, there's there's funnily enough, actually, I think Jeremy Jeremiah and I have picked the same magazine in the in you know uh, in, as an example. Uh, but pretty much the only newsstand magazine I will buy is called Black and White Photography, with a plus instead of a, a for, for the and. Um, I don't. I don't know how widely available it is actually outside the UK. Um, Not uh, as but much. It is a mag no, it is a magazine that focuses. And I don't even. I'm not particularly fussed about black and white versus color. I like both. But it's the only magazine on a newsstand that actually focuses on photography as a as an art form. Yeah, mm. there are gear reviews, but they're all at the back and stuff like that. So, mm -hmm. so oh, that's yeah. the that's the one I would buy if I'm in a railway station. <laughs> Mm -hmm. For me, I think the more um, the some of the best photography in magazines are not really uh, in photography magazines per se, as I was indicating. I th I think that you know I I have a background fashion photography, and and certainly um, magazines like Italian Vogue uh, magazines um, like uh, W. Um, uh, have extraordinary photo editors who have great eyes who, who will, and the photographers themselves will use fashion as a, just as a doorway into making some more personal kind of image making. Um, and, and not in every case, but in many, many cases. So you can see that, uh, also they tend to have very good printing now, um, there are others, of course, you know, we, we discussed uh, Nat Geo, there's um, in every kind of sector of culture, even Wired magazine has and has had really, really good photography. Uh, the New York Times Sunday Supplement magazine uh, has lately just done an extraordinary uh, pass of powerful black and white image making. Uh, I Put it as an example i think a couple months ago for us on something um so i think we you know i've tended to start looking for tactile uh representation of photography in not that i subscribe to it but i i will kind of handle those magazines when i see it uh to just experience uh photography in a different way and of course zines which we will talk about and have yeah, you, you you've triggered some some thoughts there because there's a there's a couple of places in the west end of London, um, especially around Bloomsbury, where a, a lot of the creative houses are. Because you have you know the you have uh, you have Oxford Street and south of Oxford Street is Soho, where all mm. the post houses are, and north of Oxford Street is where all the creative agencies are. And you can go. There's a couple of shops there that have all these really high art magazines that are published maybe quarterly or maybe only mm. twice a year or something like that. And it's about twenty pound for a magazine, but you get two hundred mm. pages of the 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 most amazing, you know, contemporary high fashion photography and stuff like that, which mm -hmm. is which is good. I don't think I've ever. Maybe I bought one of those magazines once. I don't know. That's it's like. <laughs> <laughs> but it's they, you know, that that sort of that sort of stuff is yeah 
Yeah, it's, 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 it's are, interesting, are, isn't it? Do it's you very miss... niche, though, isn't it? Like, it's not for everybody, you know? Yeah. Well, that kind of thing. It's true. Do we miss print magazines? Mm, mm. I mean, the beauty of, like, um, Vogue or something like that is that, like, me here in Tipperary as a teenage girl could pick it up and, you know, see the it's just a completely different surreal world and and then to be able to kind of obviously everything about anything in any of those photo shoots is so far from my own reality but the photography itself uh, is so stunning if you leave aside any of the fashion stuff um it was just like it was such a ma you know the mass media of a magazine was that it was it was sort of available for everybody that even if you didn't buy it, you would pick it up in the doctor surgery or at the dentist or, you know, you'd get to see it anyway. But if it's in a, a kind of a, a kind of a shishi gallery in um, somewhere in London, like your market's like instantly depleted. <laughs> but like, obviously, that's their intention. But um, then what what's that going to do to um you know the kind of democracy of that's interesting who so that, sees it's a good what? good question i that leads me i'm going to jump in because it's a lovely segue to another one of my magazine picks right <laughs> because it is it is a high fashion you know magazine it is published on, only rarely um in terms of the you know, in the physical sense but it does have an email list and you can get a weekly email with some, you know, with links to to content on on their their web page. And this is a a magazine. There'll be, by the way, links to this all the stuff in the show notes. Uh, this is a magazine called Hunger, uh, which was started by the fashion photographer Rankin. And uh, it's it it you know, I, I'm subscribed to their to their email list so every week I get an email from them and it yeah has I think usually I think about three different articles on it different types of imagery it's all about you know contemporary high art and fashion and things like that and movers and shakers and upcoming artists and stuff like that and it's just a, for me it's just a real breath of fresh air because so much of what we see you know or so much what i see is is what i would call really standard internet photography <laughs> it's painfully hip this thing isn't it <laughs> it certainly <laughs> makes me feel my age if that's and the pain in my hip if that's what you mean yeah, <laughs> yeah. i am so not their. i'm so not their target market i don't think but it looks really good do you know the magazine juxtapose uh -uh. no it's an art magazine, but it's again, it, it's on the what they would consider the bleeding edge of uh, aesthetic <laughs> push with emerging artists yeah. and whatnot. And they again have they publish monthly or bi monthly, and they, they their work is also great. I, they, I think me because I came from magazines early, even when I was just an emerging young artist uh, i was involved in a magazine when i lived in canada called image nation get it mm. uh and and we <laughs> would publish uh, you know every couple of months uh with a theme uh, it almost was like a printed book but we sold we probably put out maybe 500 of these a month and sold them uh and then you know when i segued to uh to vogue um I was really um, enamored with seeing my own work in print, uh, and not not in an egocentric way, but knowing that those images were moving out throughout the world in a, in a very specific way that people were handling it. And they, you know, they say for every magazine that is subscribed by a single person, maybe 10 people will experiencing it, it will experience it. And so uh, there was something, I think, just uh, the settling uh, to me in see it's like, you know, if you write a, an article for a magazine and see it printed there, there is mm -hmm. a sense of connection to the to the culture that really, in many ways, even transcends the actual image or, or article um, that is a little different than our experiences on the web, which uh, for me tend to be quick 
In other words, I, I, mm. I won't spend a lot of time studying an image online. I mean, I, I just don't. Uh, but if I see an arresting image in print, I will give it a lot more time and a lot more thought. Mm. And I, I'm not sure why that is. Maybe you guys have an idea um, of the kinetic uh, experience. Next, 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 more, 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 click, click, click. Yeah, I, th I think it's... Hit. Yeah, I, I think it's yeah. it, it's true for me as well. And in and in doing a little bit of prep for this particular episode of the show, I, I dug out a few things off the off the shelf over to the other side of my room here and flicked through mm. them. And you can get lost in them and quite you fall you can fall into them quite quickly in a way that I, I don't with internet imagery. Yeah. Um, mm. So I think there's definitely a there's definitely a, a strength in it. It's definitely a, I know it's very obvious thing to say, but it's definitely a, a very different experience and one that I cherish. And I and I hope that we yeah we continue to be uh, to be able to cherish it. The the mm. this this for me has okay. There, there are two things about this for me, and the first is um, quality because I have magazines that are run of the mill cheap paper not very mm. contrasty prints and those i do not stick with too long to be honest and uh mm. and uh, then there's other magazines like the, the um lens work brooks jensen's uh, magazine yes, which is like a, amazing print quality i mean really high quality it's a book yeah and that. Mm. and that is that keeps me glued to it much much longer and yeah. it has changed for me when screens have become better. Like when, when Apple introduced Retina screens and the resolution became better and they're more, mm. they have a more print-like feeling all of a sudden to me. That's, um, that's, that's when I got more glued to the screen again. So, um, of so, course, so of course, work of course has I have, a feed, I've, of course, as well. I have also turned off most of the notifications on my phone, so I'm not getting interrupted that much. So I'm, I'm kind of... <laughs> I've created a kind of a quiet space. Mm -mm. Um, yeah, that definitely helps. Jap yeah. Japanese magazines are also a very specific genre of photo magazines. They're they're alive and well, and there's a lot more, and they and the quality of them overall is very significant. And as mm -hmm. printing presses now become a more democratized way of getting. Uh, images into print in a high quality way even from our our phones and whatnot the the overall average quality is such that we have to buy apps to reduce the quality <laughs> we have to pay for bad quality uh, often monthly <laughs> so that's another uh, another uh, episode the subscription so, so can, can I ask, because the, 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 the screen thing is interesting, isn't it? Because not everybody has, so, so sitting on a magazine is what they call, yeah, well, sitting on a magazine, read, sitting and reading a magazine is what they call a lean back experience, isn't it? Whereas most computing platforms are what they call a lean forward experience. Mm -hmm. So already there's a tension or a difference in the way that you consume there. But uh, as, a, as an iPad user and as an enjoyer of the iPad, I, I find it a really good way to consume some, you know, s slightly more thoughtful, higher quality in in the in the artistic sense Im imagery um, mm. th than perhaps a phone is, even though the screen on my phone is really, really good and all. While I agree with that, and am similarly enamored with the iPad experience of magazines and experiencing imagery, the format limitations. Uh, is very uh, limiting to yeah. many. And when you read a magazine that has a great design director uh, and editor, and you see the layouts of pictures from big to small, the juxtaposition, the editorial, and the editing of images, uh, that's a, that is a very... Um, it's a very powerful experience in amplifying often the effect of an image. Uh, you yeah, don't get that. Agreed. You do not get that on an iPad. Mm. No, you, you don't, and and often as well because of course a lot of you know, a, a lot of 
magazines are translated to ipad in the, uh, and so you know you look at it and you get a two-page spread on your ipad which means you can see the spread but you can't read the words and you can't you can't fully appreciate yeah. the pictures because an ipad just isn't the same size as a printed magazine so so yeah i just I, i'm thinking yeah there's the, there's a lot uh, the, there's a lot going into it and and it's all for me it's all quite subtle and tactile and stuff like that and it just makes me think well how, how do we keep all of these things alive short short of me buying them all myself how do we keep these things alive <laughs> well here's we, the, go ahead we, we're still limited by screens and that's true um they are limiting they're small rectangles basically or bigger if you're sitting in front of whatever 5k monitor but I'm still, I'm still, I'm, I still expect in five to ten years we'll have my magazines back in a digital form and they'll be virtual and they'll be in space and they'll be as big as you want them to be and as resu- resolved paper, as you want them to be. Yeah, okay. yeah but right. in, in a virtual form, in a virtualized form, that's go- that's going, that's, it's, it is going to happen. Mark my words. Yeah, that would be do, do this and yeah. switch to the next page or, or get closer yeah. and look at the picture. Yeah, it's yeah. just hanging in the air in front of you. And it'll be, and, it'll, and it'll feel way, solid. It'll feel like it's a real thing. And I'm going to say in now. the same way that the <laughs> Sunny 16 crew <laughs> is committed <laughs> to spreading the word of film photography, etc. Uh, there will still be zines and magazines as a retro feel. Of course, um, just the way Polaroids are. Et people, cetera. people still have horses today for exactly for for some reason. <laughs> yeah, for good. But not reason. so much for commuting, though. No, no not, not really. Much, so. uh, the the question is, what would it take to put a magazine into the hands of say three or four hundred people uh, on a monthly basis? That is a good experience, and what would it cost? to provide that to those people nowadays? So I can answer that question Ooh. almost for everything except <sighs> monthly, actually. Um, I ju- one of the things that I wanted to show you all uh, is a magazine called Lex Explore. Mm. Okay. Let, me, so, let me make it uh, bigger on the screen. Show it again. Let's let's explore. <clears throat> this is the I think this is the number one issue. It's the only one I've got. Hang on. I've got to put it in front of the camera. There okay. you go. Like that. Yeah. So this is the the brainchild and, and the labour of love uh, of a, a chap called Killian Idsinger. Um, lovely guy, works really hard on this in his spare time. Um, it's called Let's Explore magazine and he describes it and defines it as a when ready publication. Mm-hmm. <laughs> uh, I mean, part, partly because it's it's not his um, it's not his core business. I mean, he, you know, he, he has a full time job and this is this is he was more than a hobby. It's it's a it's a, a passion and obsession and, and everything else. Mm-hmm. Uh, but he works very, very hard on this. And this is a really high quality magazine. Um, and, uh, you know, it's it's published. Yeah. And usually you get a, a couple a year, I think, or maybe one every nine months or something like that. But it's it's a great balance of stories and pictures, uh, and you know every every submitted piece it gets about you know four or five pages in in the magazine, you know, with a spread of you know half a dozen pictures and a, and a and a few hundred words of story, and it's fantastic and it's really well thought through, and every edition is themed uh and uh yeah it's great in fact actually um i'll put some links again in the show notes uh, i think they're they're open for submissions at the moment for the for the next Ooh. when ready the next when ready edition of let's explore and uh the the answer on the cost i think it sells for about 25 euros i'm going to double check that while we talk though um, so, so that's he, not monthly is, jeremiah but that that isn't that is sort of a, a small production high quality magazine that that goes out semi regularly but not very frequently is there like a print on demand mm. thing that he uses for that just technically speaking uh no it's not print on demand no he 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 prints the lot oh so he has it printed by a proper printer and then he he takes care of the shipping and everything that's right yeah wow yeah. okay that's 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 a commitment. It is, is. Man, it is a commitment, yes. The just in time arrival of your magazine yeah. once ordered. Yeah. Yeah. Um, mm-hmm. and, and, you know, obviously our, our instinct is to completely kind of move this into self publishing and books, but I think that's, the, that's a discussion for another time. But, but magazines and their impermanence, generally, as a cultural object. 
uh, coupled with photography uh, in terms of the non-preciousness of of that, um, it it it's just very very different. And I often, uh, when I was working for print magazine, both editorially in fashion, but also uh, shooting portraits or stories for newspaper magazines, etc. When I was starting. Uh, there is a, the, from the photographic point of view, you want great quality and you're always like, oh my God, the blacks are milky <laughs> or they filled in or the whites aren't right or the half tones are too coarse. <clears throat> so there was always that. And when you started to move to well-published, well-printed imagery, the kind of relaxation and understanding how how to translate an image into print because it is a different form mm. um, was part of the technical um, adjustment that one would make um, even more complicated in color with shifting dynamics. Um, we're losing that uh, at the same time that we are establishing, you know, uh, technically sRGB or Adobe RGB as as a format, and if you're, we'll get into the weeds a bit. If your screen is set at a two point two gamma, uh, and and there's not that much light, you can pretty well get within ten fifteen percent of what anyone with those settings are, and they will experience the same image that you do. And and I think what Chris pointed out is as screens get better, as they become the norm that the democratization of high quality presentation through the screen will be more effective than a printed magazine or a printed magazine in the past has been. Um, I think the difference is uh, when we talk about magazines like uh, Let's Explore, Aperture, um, you know, you can name a flaunt, you know, Hunger, they become almost like bi-monthly books rather than magazine experiences. They're, they're printed as a collectible in a way. Um, you know, yesterday, this arrived just coincidentally to our show. This from Aperture, I'll hold this up. This little Photo newspaper. book review. So this is like, you know, a, a book review. And, you know, this is, Utopia, right? Yeah, and it, it it's themed in that way, and it this is there's no way you want to throw this away. I mean, this is like mm. a gorgeous book. Even the, here's mm. a, an ad for Fuji. You'll be happy to know, Adrian. Um, <laughs> <laughs> and and also less happy, Chris, because I agree with your comment on Discord that <laughs> medium format. You know, come on. Digital medium oh, format right. isn't really medium format, but that's a different no, episode. No, no. <laughs> that's a different episode, yes. Oh, uh, even I would agree with that, definitely. The battle of the medium <laughs> format. But uh, getting back to the point is you have a high quality art book that's published. Um, and in a way, I, w I would very much like to, to break that away as a different topic because I think it's the democratization of it that's interesting. Uh, I'm exploring doing... Um, a collection of work on uh, broadsheet, on um, very cheap printed newsprint, a, a better quality newsprint, big with mm. folds, very, very loosey goosey. But choosing and selecting the images that will benefit mm. from a newsprint experience. Ah, nice. Yeah. And, and, mm. and so that's something that I'm playing with and uh, found a printer and, and exploring the formats and how to keep it interesting. And, and I thought, well, I'm gonna, if it works, I'm going to send it basically to everybody I know. I mean, it's, it's, going, <laughs> it's going to be big. It's, it's one of these newspaper reading kind of experiences where you disappear behind the thing when you open it, right? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, mm -hmm. that's, that's exactly it. That's a broadsheet. Size does big. matter. It, yes. So the experience is going to be in size, the quality less so, but you won't notice because I'm going to use, I hope, theoretically, the right imagery for the right mm. paper and right. printing methods. Mm. So I, 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 that's the trick. In other words, the so I love that idea. 
Yeah, I love when people really play with the parameters because, so, I mean, everything you produce and publish, there are always compromises to make in the production of stuff. And so often people just just settle for the same old compromises. You know, you know, you know well, we want this, but, you know, so we have to sacrifice it. Yeah, we want it to be small, therefore, you yeah, know, we have to sacrifice something for, you know, battery life or whatever. You know, that, you know the... You know, to to play with it to, to take the same set of parameters but set the compromises in a different way you know i think that's a great idea i'd love to see that do you know uh, when as a as a less so as a film director but when you're doing tv there's an adage that directors uh have, have agreed to generally when you're directing tv they call it the art of exquisite compromise <laughs> so the the art is burying those compromises in ways that are invisible and seem like they are choices rather than <laughs> exactly. <laughs> so, but so that's gr- that's a general life rule, with, isn't that? Mm, it is, it is. right? So, but I mean, just tell them that you meant it that way. Definitely say that. Well, I yeah. always do. <laughs> yeah, it must be you can't see now. anybody in the room because there's no light here and like, <laughs> no no that was on purpose <laughs> yeah tv screens are big enough though now aren't they i mean yeah you, we're not all watching on 14 inch black and white tvs anymore. i think we're watching mm. a lot on this too right? well that's true so maybe we're mm. watching on even smaller screens but i don't know whether the relative size of that because you can hold that quite up close to your face can't you so i don't know whether the relative mm. size is bigger or smaller but it's it's an it's an interesting one that'll all so be, i like the, that'll all be old over or within five years. Yeah, yeah. Well, we'll lose it'll the be screens. our glasses. Oh, we'll of course, you go back to back to VR. Virtualization. Again. Sorry, Adrian, I interrupted you. No, 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 it's okay. I, I'm really intrigued by this whole virtualization thing or virtual reality or whatever you want to call it. So five years, really, five years. Yeah, it'll yeah. begin. It'll begin in about one or yeah. two years, and then give it wow. another three to four years to mature a bit. So, I agree. I mean, uh, for someone like myself, who is, uh, as, as I think you guys know, uh, a <laughs> sickeningly early adopter of <laughs> useless toys. Can we quote you one on that? out of ten. <laughs> yeah. Uh, you know, I keep one out of ten. So everything that I buy is ten times more expensive than it should be. <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> but but uh, I I have not bought an Oculus, like which is shocking for for me to especially myself. as it's as it's comparably cheap right yes because i the first oculus i had a you know the experience was so bad yeah. that i felt it needed to leap in a much greater way over yeah. the second one and i will buy the the next generation <laughs> you do that um <laughs> but but then you might not buy it from oculus it might be i won't another company won't. yeah yeah it probably will be but I hear Whoever didn't Sony launched something this week that cost so, about $30,000 or something like that. Everyone has these things right now, <laughs> but they are still not like everyday things just yet. Not for $30,000, oh. they're not, no. No, that's industrial <laughs> focused because it's expensive yeah. to make some of these technologies, but that price will come down and so on and so on. Um, back to magazines. Where were we? Uh, 3D magazines. <laughs> 3D? Oh, that's interesting. 3D magazines. 3D magazines. <laughs> Aren't all magazines three dimensional? I Do found. I, um, Anaglyph, Anaglyph, I was kind of with a little. having a little look, um, uh, and actually, it was an interesting article about the sustainability of. I was thinking, like crowdfunding for magazines is that the way forward? And it seems to have been be used uh, in, in a you know successfully, not successfully. It depends. Some people have good experience. Some people don't. But. The magazine, a digital magazine that it's on is called, I think, Aiga.org. And it's gorgeous. And and I thought instantly to myself, well, if this is the, this, if this, is, you know, this is my idea of a really nice digital magazine, the usability of it, the design of it, the way it's presented to you, like it's not trying to be like a print magazine, but it just, it's very... Um, it's very lovely to flick through and explore and use, um, and I, I don't know, like if this um, sort of thing is a model for digital magazines, then I think it's it's going in the right direction, is it? I don't know. Can, Has anybody else clicked well, into it? H- how about this? Can you can you uh, 
figure, just as, as Chris is talking about the future of, of kind of uh, VR, AR uh, magazines that, that will be, or digital paper, whatever, however the, it manifests, mm. probably both. But uh, with new printers, home printers that are so good and so beautiful and so inexpensive that we will have the option of like literally printing at home, printing and binding at home years ago, maybe... 10 years ago, I was in Helsinki uh, on something um, and, and went into a bookstore in Helsinki and they had a list. Uh, they just had basically book titles. That's it. It was a tiny little shop, but they had thousands of book titles. And uh, when you bought a book, you bought a book, they said, uh, 15 minutes, come back, have a coffee there. And they printed. Printed on demand, bound, looked like a normal mm. book. Of course, I didn't buy one because I don't speak Finnish. But um, <laughs> but I, w I this is like 10, 15 years ago. I was flabbergasted. So it printed mm. the book and bound the book. Yeah. Hard I mean, you wouldn't. And, and I can see those kinds of things as being interesting, even though they may not be practical. But to print an I, art I, book at home. Have you seen that printing right? machine? I saw it was right in the in the store. Yeah. No, they're not small. <laughs> no, it, it was. It looked like a big Xerox machine. Yeah, that, yeah. it was about that size, right? Do, yeah. Do you Maybe think you could small. curate your own magazine then, right, and print on demand? So, like a an RSS feed, but for but for real. So, you say, well, I like this columnist from this magazine, and I like this news article set from this magazine, and you know, bundle those all together for me and send it me once a week, please. Probably could. Mm -hmm. uh, That'd be you know, a bit crazy, mm -hmm. wouldn't it? Yeah. Uh, listen, and also there could be a a business in <clears throat> basically you subscribe. They put it out to local printers, and it's delivered to you from a local um, a local place. I I just saw a uh, a I guess it's a a, a maker company that has the world's you know, largest array of CNC machines and milling machines and 3D printers and whatnot, but they actually don't have any. You send them your design and your what materials and whatnot's all online, and they will distribute it. They farm it out, yes. The, they farm it out to exactly yeah. the, the, the one who has the strongest um, way to kind of materialize your thing and then it's delivered to you mm -hmm. um it's a fantastic business model i used that um, several I times in the past mm -hmm. yes so so i mean we are we are talking about this as if we assumed that magazines would be something that was coming back um and getting stronger over time i, I see i do see this with books by the way um that the the ebook doesn't really work that well, especially for things that are not just written text, but that are layouted photos, uh, photos mm -hmm. and that kind of stuff. Um, I see that that ebooks don't really work for that. They work for 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 stories, but not really no for novels. Yeah, for novels, but not really for um, for that kind of stuff. I see this with the the books that I've written. That are, I don't think they even work for novels, really. Not that well. Are, not it's that a well. different thing. No. So, so the yeah. book itself. Like if magazines is, are, are a sit back experience, then surely books are like a lie down experience. <laughs> you need yeah. even more. That's true. I I, I read really big thick like, sci fi yeah. books though, Emo, and you know when you fall asleep with one of those and it whacks you in the face. <laughs> I've been quite happy with my Kindle. Thank you very much. <laughs> Yeah, so so with books, I, I wouldn't be surprised um, to see even an uptick again. But with magazines, I think for me that is still open, that is still out there. So yeah, I I, th I agree. Um, but do you know what? In the UK, we still have amateur photographer, which is printed weekly. Amazing, totally amazing. It, it Nothing is, like that. How they here. keep Nothing going? Like I have no idea. No. Yeah. Are there enough stories? Okay. Wow to keep it alive <clears throat> it can be a bit thin at times i mean they have <laughs> it's not it's not all news so there's there's some news in it um and there are some feature articles and then there are some things like reviews and stuff like that as well of equipment but and a whole bunch of adverts at the back as well um, and but it, it, it's pretty still printed and it's out there on the newsstands every week um you can so, also get a a digital subscription to it as well so do, do we agree that the future of magazines may be 
print on demand or self printing mm -hmm. of art books to the to your home photo let's call it photo books for our collective experience um, that cannot be reproduced or kept um, in digital form but things that we want to continually inspire us own them like books the future can mm. be just an on-demand printing so that the cost of distribution the cost of assembly you could make your magazine with InDesign even pages on your little computer collect your own work or edit other work you can integrate that and if there's a, a inexpensive high quality way of delivering that uh, to the universe, I think that probably is the future rather than a big printing plant that goes out and has to find a new stand to sell. Then, then, it, then you're turning this into a lean forward experience, which means users have to be more active to get to their magazine, which, it, will well, the end user well, do that? Will the reader do that? It's probably important to like uh, think about the waste involved as well, isn't it? So like printing on demand is obviously going to produce a lot less waste True. and waste a lot less paper than, um, you know, mass producing things that people possibly aren't even going to buy. So it's a good model, I think. And surely it should have been moving that direction um, a long time ago. Or as Chris said, is paper uh, the, the, the last holdout? Once we have electronic paper, pa paper has is... always been a bridge technology. Mm. Uh, yes, I, I, I so agree with that. <laughs> and I, it's been a long time, of yes, course, thousands long. of years. Very long, long bridge. bridge. Yeah, it's not been too bad. Papyrus has it? Yeah. before that was a bridge technology, and yeah. cuneiform on clay was a bridge technology. But but I think if if I had the ability of looking through a um, a tablet that was as high quality, glossy or, or not, color, black and white, that was a complete lean back experience um, that didn't feel heavy, that just felt, wow, there would be no reason for me to have paper at all. Like uh, uh, just getting rid of my CDs now, you know, like uh, digitizing all of my <laughs> old w commercial work and my <laughs> movie work. I mean, I, I've been doing that during pandemic style and, and all the one inches and two inches and just getting it down to, you know, ProRes. Is, Adrian, uh, didn't, it's did, liberating. Didn't you on, on, on the last Sunny 16, on the video version, which, by mm. the way, was really well produced. Um, did you, oh, didn't, I'll tell John, he'll be well chuffed to hear that. Tell him, absolutely. <laughs> I was well impressed. Um, this... The, <laughs> This this doesn't compare. This, 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 this was a really good slick production. Um, I uh, wasn't someone saying there that about someone else who was scanning their negatives and then throw the negatives away. Oh yeah, we had a bit of a discussion. Yes, about yeah. uh, uh, about whether or not you keep your negatives. Yeah, and uh, I think yeah, uh, uh, you know, yeah, I I haven't. I I've gotten rid of all of my negatives. So digitizing uh, things um, and then throwing wow. away the original. Well, they were always digitized anyway. They were scanned by the labs that you know. So I've all, you know, in, when shooting film, I've always had my my films processed by a lab and and get scans back. So um, you know, I I just. I, I can't see a time. I couldn't see a time when I would ever have any use for them. So I, I, I have every negative I ever took, Me too. even though I, Me I too. don't know if I'll ever go near them ever again. But I just want to know that I have the option. Well, it's like it's like what we in Photoshop world called non-destructive editing, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, so. But it's it's mental ballast as well. I that's what I heard in the yeah. episode. That's there's a, so there's that a is, cognitive right. ballast there. Yes. Well, I mean, we could, yeah, without going back over. The other old thing brand, is they don't exactly take up that much space, so I don't feel bad about keeping them. No, no. Well, without going back over old ground in a deep way, I mean, yeah, we, we've talked before about me getting rid of a lot of my cameras last year, and and just the the mental ballast, yeah, that the 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 that my hobby had brought me over the the years, uh -huh. and how I'm now feeling much lighter. I'm taking and making many more images, and I'm really enjoying it again. 
Um, so, you know, the cost of having all that stuff, and, and it, it didn't take up a lot of space, but the mental space it took up was quite, you know, considerable <laughs> compared to its physical space. Yeah, and I so, didn't, I didn't so, really want to steer this discussion into that direction. It was more like uh, uh, yeah. attaching to what Jeremiah said about digitizing things like the CDs and stuff and then getting rid of those. And so. Yeah, I, I got rid of all my CDs as well a lot some time back. And, and, of course, CDs aren't really worth anything, so I gave them all to Oxfam. And, you know, Oxfam have man managed to make a ton of money off of selling them. So, you know, that's that's a win-win. I wasn't using them. Somebody else is enjoying them. And some yeah. you know, people yeah. have, have got some I benefit from it in a charitable way. Salvation Army. It was great. Yeah. <coughs> it took a lot of, lot of stuff. And DVD is a little more complicated because I have thousands and thousands because I get them from the Academy and whatnot. Yeah. And you can't throw them in the garbage because they're all watermarked to you. <laughs> so to bring them back to that. <laughs> Um, so that was. <laughs> don't ask. Just ah. take them. Just give them back to the guild. And say, there I did. You go, I'm That's done what with I did. Now. I, I had a drunk mm. deliver like you know ten boxes, and they they showed up and they said, "What are these? <laughs> these are your DVDs." Ah, so so do we so do we have a conclusion? What's the future in our minds? The future of uh, magazines? Electronic. I think I I think Jeremiah called it. I think that there is uh, well a, a, a mixture of Jeremiah and Ema. I think. The future of printed magazines is going to veer more and more to on demand, whether that's really tiny volumes or up to medium volumes uh, for sustainability purposes, for you know uh, economic purposes. Uh, and I think what that'll do is because print on demand is inherently more expensive, uh, I think what, what the future of print magazines is going to be these higher quality, more thought out things. And I think we'll see fewer of the... You know, the the very thin, mostly adverts kind of magazine mm. that's on the newsstand today. Uh, those, those will go digital, but the good quality stuff will be available in print. That's my hope anyway. Mm. Seems like everything else in life at the moment, magazines are on the pivot, just like us, all yeah. of us. Life is on the pivot. <laughs> life um, is on the pivot. Let's move on to the picks of the week. Um let me see. I've see, I see a couple of magazine-related ones. Let me start this off with one that's not magazine-related at all. And I think I'll have to bring in my browser first, which I'll do. Hold on a second. Isn't it nice to be well-prepared and show mm. an empty screen? Here we go. <laughs> um, I'm picking <clears throat> a photographer from the... Well, he was born in 1930, a French photographer, uh, died in 2000, uh, René Maltet, which I didn't know much about. <laughs> but he, Maltet. Is that a real name? <laughs> yes, it yeah. is. And is he, it really? He oh, was... Well, he was humorous street. Maltet. He was a street photographer. Well, at a time when that wasn't really called street photography, when it was called photography, um, he was a photographer and he just... Ha, has, yeah. has this this look at the world um, in a an extremely fun way. Oh, can, a really can we go good back eye. to that first photo? Can we go back? That first photo is awesome for those on That's audio. Darwin. There's That's family, Darwin. <laughs> there's a fa family of three walking down a boardwalk at the beach, I think. Yeah. And the father has a stripy yeah. top on with horizontal yeah. stripes. The mother has a stripy top on with and vertical stripes. And the kid has <laughs> checks. Yeah, that's brilliant. <laughs> and it doesn't really matter to me if that is set up or not, but it is just mm. so humorous. I had a big laugh. <laughs> yeah. um, there, were, there were a couple others, like this guy carrying a mirror. That is definitely <laughs> a candid shot of sorts. Mm. And it just mm. looks like he doesn't have a head. Um, <laughs> the mirror is in front of his head. Or... Or a guy with black hair looking into <laughs> a, the front of a cannon and you don't see him because the photo is so contrasty. So it looks like he doesn't have a head or um, oh this God. couple kissing just, uh, under a statue and the statue yeah. looking down on them. <laughs> it's just this whole page is full. Oh, here's a statue that just walked away. That, it's this, that's <laughs> one of my favorites. Yeah, and, 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 I, and oh I, did, I did know some of his photos because they were in some book sometime when I was smaller. <clears throat> but it really, it really ended up. Um, I was really happy to find him again. Oh my God, he's one of my newest favorite photographers now that I'd never known. Here's one. Yeah, this is absolutely oh, wow. fantastic. It is. It is fun. These pictures oh. are 
just pure joy of looking at photography. But what an eye! <laughs> oh my god! Well, what an eye, and so pro probably also <laughs> what an what an insane amount of photos he must have taken to get some of these shots. <laughs> you mean he did? It wasn't just one decisive moment. In he was day. not a one-hit wonder for sure. Mm -hmm. no. But yeah, René yeah, Maldet, and I and I looked up a book of him, which is only available used for about two hundred bucks. So I'm searching now for some of uh, older prints of. That, that, the number if of photos he two, must have taken did, two, just just, me just reminded me have, has any of you ever seen the contact sheet of uh the very famous photograph of salvador dali where he's jumping in the air and somebody's yes. thrown a glass With the cats of, and stuff a jug yeah, of water yeah. and a cat at him and stuff like that have you you've seen the contact sheet of that and all the things yes. that went wrong with it it's yes. brilliant <laughs> and there, there must have been things going wrong of course i mean that's just normal. There's, I, I think it's still a myth that that uh, there are there are photographers who just go out, take one photo, and win the Pulitzer Prize. It's not happening. Yeah. <laughs> I was just amazed they got the cat to do it twelve times. <laughs> <laughs> Probably had twelve cats, you know, twelve Probably. traumatized cats. Yeah, 12 um, traumatized. Who's next, Adrian? How Adrian. about you? Okay, so uh, well, this is a, a website this week, um, and uh, do you know we we. Uh, I'm always in a constant struggle to get you know, to get into more intentional consumption of media and stuff like that. So rather than scroll through you know, social media platforms, I, ha I, I tend to go on the back on the old school RSS. Um, and this is a website that has an RSS feed which can give you photographic inspiration. So it's called hip stock i can't stay okay what's it called <laughs> hipstography <laughs> hip hipstography com, and as the name suggests it is linked to the app hipstomatic which we all know and love um but what it gives you is is every day it just gives you a, a photo of the day or a new combination combination of uh you know effects in hipstomatic but it's for me i like it because every photo every day is different and so it's just a bit of rss feed photographic inspiration which i think is it really yeah it just you know it doesn't have to be about hipstamatic it's just different looks different mm. photos different styles you know? so that's why i like it anyway so so it's a good way for me of of uh you know getting inspiration through a digital channel but without having to dive into the the swamp that mm. is instagram <laughs> <laughs> It's an entire web page and a, and a full one with lots of content that came to life around Hipstamatic. Is that, am I getting this right? Pretty much, yeah. yeah. It's, awesome. it's, it's been out there for Looks years. Looks great. Awesome. Looks great. Lovely, yeah. and well I think natively executed. it's French. Right. Natively it's French, yeah, it but has it has an English yes. language version yes. as well. So, mm. Great. Wonderful. <laughs> <sighs> Jeremiah, you're next. A very simple uh, choice and, and uh, shared by some uh, W Magazine. Um, the photo editing of, of this magazine has been uh, extraordinary. Uh, the editor it has a very, very refined eye. I uh, got to know him a few years ago when I was shooting, directing Gossip Girl, uh, the show here in in New York, and he f he was featured in one of the episodes because one of the actors gets a job at W, and he played himself, and we got to shoot at W, and I got to know him. But I just find that the the consistency and quality of the photography, both portraiture, fashion, and the like, is always always hmm. spectacular. Um, so it's a tribute um, of the kind of real beautiful blend of art and um, art and commerce here. Right, it looks great. Yeah. There we go. Awesome. Thanks good. for sharing that. And last but not least, Imar. Yeah, not directly magazine related this, but um, if you're, I suppose, uh, maybe wanting to lay out a magazine or <laughs> something like that, this might be quite helpful. I've just noticed lately um, at the YouTube channel for Adobe Creative Cloud, and I know it's not really cool to be praising them, <laughs> but um, uh, this is brilliant. Every single day, three, four times a day, I've notifications turned on for this now because there's even stuff on it that my kids would be interested in. Um, they just pop up every day, live videos of tutorials, how to do things right across all the different apps um, and I've just found this really nice 20 minute things popping up that people might um, enjoy exploring. Cool. Nice. 
Well, as a Creative Cloud uh, subscriber uh, and a kind of deep user of Lightroom and Photoshop, um, yeah, uh, I, I like the Adobe stuff. I, I, I gotta say that, that a the customer service, and I've had some issues in as I've kind of changed to the M1 chip. Uh, getting on the phone with them, uh, just spectacular customer uh, support um, of really drilling down. So I, I, I think that their their support has been great. Their updates have been great. And their educational part has been mm. great. So uh, I can praise them. They're, they're a company that fulfills their promise, I think. All right. That's me. So that, I think brings us to the end of this episode. Um, that was interesting. Let's, let's <laughs> figure that magazine thing out. Maybe, maybe we should make a magazine one day. I think that. so. Uh, I think a broadsheet. A TV, oh, broadsheet. A T4 broadsheet, why not? A T4 broadsheet. Uh, <laughs> just, I'll, just, I'll, just one I'll big page, in. one big page with two sides, and then you fold it three times. And, oops. That's oh, it. Be good. <laughs> and it's just four yeah. pictures yeah, and a little that's brief it. on the cover. That's yeah. all it takes. And a few stories on the, the on the back. Is, and you could do it. That's it. Yeah. yeah. Easy to lay out, easy to print, easy to distribute. So. <laughs> that All would right. be good. <laughs> so, yeah, let's hear. Everyone who's listening to that, let's hear what you think about that. Um, you know how to contact us. We're online on the Twitters, on the Instas at TFOP now. We have a Discord, which is um, now kind of turning into... Uh, I, I don't know where that squirrel <laughs> rodent focus comes from, but it's it's almost like an epidemic. <laughs> so... Do you anyway, know what? actually, I did have actually uh, a shout out to make around our Discord this week because um, uh, a couple of weeks ago, uh, show one six four, we we did an update on technical stuff and and computational stuff, and that has has uh, spawned uh, actually by by uh, by our Discord member the Frog, uh, you know, started quite an extended conversation around the ethics of computational photography and and what does it mean and what can we do about it and stuff like that. So, so if anybody's interested in what they hear on a show that often there is a follow-up conversation in the discord and oh, it's yes. not all just gerbil and rat photos no it's not that's just that's just <laughs> one chat that's just one channel in our discord I'm, yeah. I'm very happy how active this is becoming there's a lot of discussion very. around a lot of different topics it, they're very chatty yes yeah. So yeah. yes, well um, now I'm a, now I'm a fully fledged member of the Gerbil Marketing Board. Um, I, <laughs> I can recommend that everybody join the TFOP Discord, and share their <laughs> photographs, and join the Gerbils <laughs> channel if you like. Okay, that's it for today. Thanks for being around, and uh, see you in a week from now. Till then, take care. Take care. Bye bye. bye.